horrible topic to cover, yet at the same time it has to be discussed because what is happening is truly sickening and evil to the core, and the people behind it are evil to the core. It continues and it grows. There are organizations and people inside our government are using their positions of power to help provide the children for these sick people who would purchase or sell them. It has gotten way out of hand. I know in the UK it is way over the line, but it's a touchy subject. It's a hard subject to talk about. Folks, this this is Sheila Zelensky on on the line. She is going to join us here for for a while. Uh, Sheila is the, the host of the Weekend Vigilante Show. Sheila Zelensky, and now we are also joined by Mr. Dave Hodges. He has a website and a radio show that he does and had some difficulties, ran into some trouble this week as he hit on a very important, sad, uh, sick topic of the CPS, the child sex kidnapping rings, and uh, really, really hit the nail on the head. Dave from the Common Sense Show, welcome to the program. Hi, guys, and it's great to be on with you again. And uh, there's some things I can't talk about because it may be litigated, but let's just say financially I've been under attack, and there were clear and definitive threats issued against myself and my family. So, uh, you know, and these were specific enough that they weren't the -the run-of-the-mill, oh, I'll shoot you if I see you. These were very, very specific, and they knew things about the movements of myself and my family. And that's just why... I took this very seriously. It was that serious, and it was a well-coordinated attack. It wasn't just safety. Like I said, it was also financial, and it was coordinated across multiple fronts in my life. Sheila, you interviewed. Uh, Sheila, are you back, by the way? See, well, this is really interesting. I emailed my a producer the archive to put into our system, and there was some very strange things that happened, and our archive disappeared off the server. So I thought that was really interesting. I did a, a full hour with Dave last night. You were absolutely targeted for, I believe, and I think you believe this too, is your you know, allegations of the child sex trafficking associated with some of public officials and more nefarious <laughs> tentacles. I mean, that is the bottom line, and it's just interesting that our archive is nowhere to be found. And uh, this isn't the first time I've been down this road, but this is the first time I've been down this road on such uh, a wide spectrum of attacks. When I was on with Jim Mars back in July of '09, in the last minute of the show, I was broadcasting from my home in the city. I typically live out in the country in my other home. I had eight shots fired over my house. It was witnessed by my sister-in-law in the side yard and my next-door neighbor, who was a two-tour of Vietnam veteran. It took the police 27 minutes in the city to respond to multiple shots fired. They even admitted they had dozens of calls. Jim was very concerned. He actually called me after the show, as did my news director, Andy DeRiso, and the police chalked it up in a later report that it was just fireworks from three blocks away, yet this was over three weeks after the 4th of July, and these weren't fireworks. These two people jumped out of a van, and they fired shots. These incidences do not happen in isolation. And then uh, about four months later, um, I'm driving home after coaching a college basketball game to my country home, and two gentlemen tried to run me off the road, and this went on for 11 minutes. It was all recorded in the Maricopa County 911 tapes, and the deputy sheriffs wouldn't do anything despite the fact I had a description, despite the fact that I drove to a fire station out here in the rural area where I live, and they witnessed some of this. And I went to uh, the sheriff's headquarters. This is Sheriff Joe now, America's supposed toughest sheriff, to get a copy of the 911 tapes, and I was told they were missing. So this is my third foray into being harassed in, in, in such a serious manner. So been down there this road before, Doug. I know you've been there, as as many of us have. Good for you, Dave. You know you're not going to let this uh, you're not going to let this issue back you down. But I did decide because of the personal nat- nature of the threats, and we are probably going to subpoena the phone records that the my carrier will not provide now because the phone call came in on my cell phone, and it specifically mentioned uh, speaking about quote the children. Well, the only time I've talked about the children publicly in recent memory, is about child sex trafficking. And uh, I ran an article uh, last August, and I said, this is coming. And I talked about how the CPS agents across the country have now become de facto federal agents 
because under Obamacare, there was a 110-page document that was written and commissioned by a group called the ICF, a UN think tank group. It was adopted by Catherine Sebelius of HHS, and it was the field manual in which dictated how CPS agents could operate and what leeway they had to go into homes and steal children. And if you don't mind, with your guys' permission, let me just give you a few examples, because none of you parents out there who have kids and none of your kids who have grandkids, your grandkids, they're not safe. And let me explain to you what I'm talking about. In the document, this 110-page document, CPS can come into your home for literally no reason at all. They can take your kids for what they call educational neglect, and this is the presence of bad grades on your kids' report cards. Yet I read this document from cover to cover. Nowhere in there does it say what a bad grade is. Now, in our family, if uh, my son came home with a C, we'd consider that to be a bad grade in most situations, but they don't specify, so they leave it open-ended to the field agent to determine. They also call, have a, a violation of uh, parental authority over children called isolation neglect. Isolation neglect is if you were to ground your child, prevent them from playing with their friends or being involved in social media, they call this isolation neglect and can take your kids. If you have beer in the home, they can take your kids. If you have a gun in the home, you're a registered gun owner, uh, or if you're not, they can take your kid. Uh, there is no end to what they can do. If your child uh, has missed five days of school in any one month, they can come in and say that's educational neglect and take your kid. So the CPS agents now are acting with extreme fervor. They have unbridled authority, and now they're working in concert with other state-run CPS agencies. And let me give you an example. One of the cases we're going to talk about tonight involves State Department employee with a security clearance, Monica Wesolowski, who got SWAT teamed and then CPS came in and took her then four-year-old boy last December. They couldn't prove anything against Monica. She had done nothing wrong. So the, and this is in Virginia, the Illinois CPS shows up at the parents' house demanding that her parents who live in Illinois sign a statement saying, if you want to see your grandkid again, you will sign this statement that says that your daughter, Monica, abuses her son. So now we're seeing interagency cooperation because these CPS agents are now federalized. And if they're federalized, guys, there's nothing to protect them. Let me just give you a brief synopsis of what's happened to Monica's son. Monica's son is autistic. He's since turned five. And CPS found an eczema patch on his neck. They didn't come into her house and SWAT team her with any specific allegations. They examined the boy, and they talked to him for two and a half hours, and they found an eczema, dermatitis patch, on his neck. And they said, oh, I see you strangle your child. And they used that as a justification to take the boy. Yet the police are right there, and if there was any really clear evidence that it happened, the police would have arrested Monica and taken her to jail but no such allegations have ever been mentioned. Well, the boy was placed in a foster home, and unknown to CPS, the neighbors knew Monica, and she asked them to take the boy to a pediatrician to get an examination, and the pediatrician said there has been no abuse perpetrated against this boy. This is simply dermatitis or eczema. Monica tried to use this in her CPS proceedings, and they wouldn't even bother to look at the evidence from the pediatrician. The CPS agents of Virginia were so upset that they took away the boy from the first foster home and put the boy in a second foster home with two gay fathers. Now, this is a boy, now he turns five. He's been potty trained for over two years. Normal boy, except for the fact he does have a disability and he has some spectrum of autism. As the boy began to live more with these two fathers, he would run around when Monica would see him, moving his arms and sexual gesture motioning and saying, cut my arms off, cut my arms off. This five-year-old who had been potty trained for over two years was now again wearing diapers and defecating in his pants, and Monica found evidence of a rash on his anus. I've seen the proof. The proof is so graphic, I don't dare put it on my website so as not to offend people, but I've seen the proof of this. So has CPS, so has the Fairfax Assistant County Attorney, 
Chris Sigler, and so has the local police department. And, and yet they take the boy away from Monica for no reason, and yet with these two fathers, they let this abuse continue. The boy is also mandated because of his autism to have occupational therapy paid by the state, and this is not happening. Monica is a Catholic, and CPS regulations mandate that the religious practices of the children will continue. This isn't happening. It's just one big pile of poo, yet this is going on all over the country. Since I first ran this story in the third week of May, I have heard from disaffected CPS agents all over the country, including in Virginia, and they said this is par for the course. Many of these foster children disappear, as Nick Bryant so eloquently wrote in the book called The Franklin Scandal, and this is how many children end up being sex trafficked. So I'm writing about this. Now, simultaneous to this, I'm also coming across information from some of my better insider sources that Ambassador Chris Stevens was not just gun running to al-Qaeda, he was supporting the gun running operations designed to take out Gaddafi and Assad, and he was doing this with drug money. And then later allegations came up and said he was also involved in child sex trafficking. He was murdered two months before the election, and the smart money says Stevens had to be taken out, so this information didn't surface during the campaign. Now, these were the issues that I was focused on at the time that I got harassed and threatened, and the child sex trafficking was clearly mentioned to me in in the threat and said, stop writing about the children or you're going to have to worry about your family. I know it's a long story here, but, you know, here's the bottom line. Uh, Monica is a GS9. She has no outside employment, and she's paid by the federal government. So why in the world would the IRS have to audit someone like this? They already know where the money's coming in from, and and easy to find out where the money's going out to. So I don't know why they'd have to audit her. But the IRS is also the enforcement agent for Obamacare, and Obamacare now monitors child welfare through control of HHS and ultimately CPS. So it makes sense to me the IRS was involved. Monica had some social interactions with a gentleman who was writing to Congressman Frank Wolf of the 10th Congressional District in Virginia. And this is actually, some of this is in my story in terms of the fact that Congressman Wolf has now admitted there's child sex trafficking in Fairfax County, Virginia, where Monica lives. This is on his congressional website, and I copied and pasted it and put quote marks around it word for word this morning. What I didn't reveal in this article, and I'm saving it up for later salvos against CPS, is that Congressman Wolf had an insider source who Monica knew socially. Her boy was friends with this man's daughter, and he was putting out prolific amounts of information about child sex trafficking to congressmen, including Congressman Wolf, and he died under very, very mysterious circumstances, and that's when the harassment of Monica started. So she doesn't know anything about the sex trafficking. She was not my source, but that doesn't mean the other side, the bad guys, didn't consider her to be an operational leak. And when you add to the fact that she works in a liberal organization and she has an NRA bumper sticker on her car and she's a practicing Catholic, she would be perfect uh, whistleblower material, and I can see why she was targeted. And then when I tell this story, people say, well, why would the Virginia CPS agree to do this dirty work for the federal government and purge a federal employee that they feel is going to be a security leak? Well, here's why. When her son Dylan was taken, the Virginia CPS receives a $5,000 remuneration. And Monica's ex-husband's last name was Rodriguez. And so the boy carries the father's name. So he's designated as being Hispanic, uh, in other words, a minority, And that brings more cash payment from the feds. And because the boy has a disorder, a disability called autism, that's even worth more money for remuneration from the feds. So the Virginia CPS are into flesh peddling for profit's sake. Now, off the record, and she won't be off the record for long, after she moves during the 4th of July weekend, a former Virginia CPS agent not too far from this area 
is going to come on my show, and she's going to state the following. The Virginia CPS forges documents and fabricates evidence and engages in all kinds of fraud to try to take as many kids away from law-abiding parents as possible. And she said, what's happened to Monica is par for the course. But she did say this, too, and this is interesting to me. She said, essentially, they like to go after the poor and the minorities because they typically don't have the resources to fight back. Monica is kind of the exception to this because she's a GS9 with the federal government with a security clearance. So this has led all of us to believe that this is part of political targeting. And the Virginia CPS is all too happy to help because they get the financial remuneration from being the middleman. When Monica came on my show a couple of weeks ago, the assistant county attorney, Chris Sigler, wrote to Monica's attorney of record at the time and basically said things aren't going to go well if she keeps going to the media. And this Magda Alarcon, who's the social worker for the Department of Family Services that's managing uh, taking away her son Dylan, said about Monica well, that so-and-so went to the media, and she's psychologically unstable, and because she went to the media, she has endangered her son, and because of that, she will never get her son back. So they're trampling on her First Amendment rights. The Supreme Court has upheld the fact that you can represent yourself pro se. The county attorney, Chris Sigler, has said he won't meet with her until she has an attorney. So this is a violation of her Fifth Amendment due process rights and her Fourteenth Amendment equal protection rights under the Constitution. This is government in action in Northern Virginia, and it's all one big incestuous ring. The police won't act on reports of sexual abuse when they have the evidence. The county attorney ignores it, and the CPS and the DFS, Department of Family Services, they're facilitating these crimes against this boy. Well, Dave, let's address a fundamental baseline issue here. I mean, these CPS agents, you know, you're right, they're de facto feds, but totally gone is any pretense of any due process and following the rule of law. So essentially parental authority and rights hang by a thread under Obamacare regulations, like you said, innocuous behaviors like poor grades or they flag them if there's a gun in the home. And there is a myriad of reasons. It's mind-numbing. But here's the bottom line. It's well chronicled how perverted and pedophiliac, I mean, let's think of the inbred Illuminati kingpins and how well chronicled it is what they're involved in. I want to make the jump into uh, some more nefarious uh, tentacles of all this. Let's talk about number one. Um, What do they want in this child? Why do they want her child? I mean, it really is the... Uh, it's the perfect plan, isn't it? I mean, 80 kids have disappeared. You've reported on that show. Yeah, out of the state of Oklahoma and their CPS, exactly. Um, and these kids have still never been accounted for. I, I, I wondered what they were doing at, at, at bed check and, and, yeah. and meal call, and it's, just, it's amazing. So I think what you're asking me, Sheila, is who's the power behind this? I'll, I'll say this, and let me answer from the middle, and I'll go from middle to top. <laughs> at the middle levels, what I'm discovering is the people might be in a position to know, but they don't want to know. Or they might be in a position to know, but they back away from knowing. And, but they know what they're supposed to say and not say. And this is why the police in Fairfax County don't investigate what's happening to Dylan. And why do they target her kid? Very simply, uh, I'll repeat what Monica said, that one of the gay fathers, what he said to her, oh, we just love your blonde-haired child. And I think that speaks volumes right there in combination with all the other um, symptoms that I've told you about. Um, How high does it go? Well, George Soros gave $2 million a few years ago to NAMBLA, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, whose moniker phrase is sex before eight or it's too late, and they actively advocate for pedophilia, and yet our Justice Department just says, oh, well, it's our constitutional right. Yet Monica gets punished and loses visitation time with her son for her constitutional right to come on my show. I interviewed Brandon Turbeville about a year and a half ago, and he and I were actually involved in uh, the restoration of a lady named Katrina Jalevich out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Very similar circumstances, but we were able to exert enough pressure, and I say we, mostly Brandon, bring these two, her son and and the mother, back together. What Brandon discovered, I wrote a book, an article, I believe, and he's working on a book, that talked about the royal family's involvement. 
Prince Charles has been involved deeply with Jimmy Savile. In fact, actually, I found evidence on my own that Savile actually served as a marriage counselor to Princess Di in, in her failed royal marriage. Good and Lord. Savile, as we know, is one of the most notorious perverts, and this information's leaked. He used to sneak into hospitals at night wearing his clown costume, and the nurses and doctors would cringe because they knew they couldn't stop him. And, and it was at children's hospitals he'd visit, and he'd target kids for sexual activity, his own personal gratification. So I think the royal family is clearly involved. When you, when you read about this, uh, a lot of the trails lead to the Queen of England. She traffics kids through her groups like Common Purpose. Bush has been implicated by, and I'm saying Pappy Bush, by the Washington Times in an article in 1989. My late friend of the CIA, Bill Pollack, who was the wife of uh, Annie DeRiso, my news director, uh, has told Annie and I for years that when, in fact, uh, Nick Bryant talked about this in the Franklin scandal, that when congressmen get elected or senators get elected, many of them go to parties at the Franklin House, and they're having sex with underage prostitutes that are part of these child sex trafficking rings. And when they need a key vote changed in a negative situation, say like Obamacare, and you remember how many people change their votes at the midnight hour to make it pass? They break out the videotapes, and they own these people forever. So at a minimum, this stretches into the White House, the royal family. And, and Sheila, let me just tell the listening audience here something that I mentioned on your show last night, and that's the Jerry Sandusky case. Yeah, the Second Mile Foundation and Jerry Sandusky and the Penn State sex ring scandal. But what a lot of people don't know, and, and I actually wrote about this, and I, and I was surprised that more people didn't pick up on this, Sandusky had been turned in to the authorities for years. But Penn State football in that community is, is like a god, and you don't mess with them. A, a county attorney in Center County named Ray Greikar took these allegations and ignored them at first, and he reached a point where he told his colleagues, I can no longer ignore these allegations against Sandusky and the fact that the Second Mile Foundation is pimping these kids out. And he started to look into this. Well, let me tell you what happened to Ray Greikar. Now, this is a county attorney, the county attorney. We're not talking the custodian at Penn State who walked into a shower room and saw Sandusky, you know, sodomizing a 10-year-old child. That made the media. Here's Ray Greikar, a public official, county attorney, and he's investigating Sandusky and Second Mile. Well, they never found Ray Greikar's body. They found his car at a convenience store, and the FBI found his laptop in a riverbed but it was so destroyed they said they couldn't pull any information off of it. In other words, a county attorney was murdered to cover up these crimes. Now, the media was hot on the Second Mile Foundation. After all, it had been one of Pappy Bush's thousand points of light. And as the investigation deepened, we started seeing some of the people involved in the board of directors of the Second Mile Foundation, and the names were pretty prominent and the affiliations went into the governor's office of Pennsylvania, and there were rumors it was going to go to the Senate. And all of a sudden, somebody flipped the media switch, and Sandusky's guilty, goes to jail, case closed, and you don't hear about it anymore. That, that's how much control these pedophiliacs have over this. And, Sheila, we'd be remiss if we didn't tell people that where you find pedophilia, you also find satanic rituals, in satanic sacrifices. Many of these kids are killed in snuff films, and if they're not killed in snuff films, they're so drugged up, as Nick Bryant pointed out in his book, that when they do come forward and try to tell their story, no one takes them seriously because of their addiction problems. This is a well, systemic yeah. problem in the top leadership in the world, and no one's doing anything about it. Well, and I think you mentioned something, again, as well chronicled, as how viscerally perverted these pedophiliac hucksters are i mean bohemian grove ring a bell you know when you're dealing with satanic rituals and satanic ritual abuse russ dizdar this, this he has actually pulled open a lot of cases across the nation where there's children involved and could be 80 kids at a time hmm i wonder how those 80 how do 80 children disappear and nobody nothing to see here folks these videotapes of you know these very prominent people having sex with young children. You just said their mantra. Uh, North American Man Boy Love Association, sex before eight or it's too late. And here's George Soros, oh. the collapser of economies, friends to all the presidents and the Federal Reserve people, 
and he's supporting NAMBLA. $2 million donation, isn't that what you said? Well, yeah, well, and it's not just him. Um, if you look at Nick Bryant's evidence trail and John DeCamp, state senator from Nebraska's evidence trail, right. uh, a guy named Lawrence King was involved, and this involved a bank failure involving about $400 million back in the 80s. But what came out of this investigation as a byproduct was something the feds didn't want to come out, and that was his involvement in Boys Town and sex trafficking all the way to the White House. Interestingly enough, Herman Cain, who was then the head of the Kansas City Federal Reserve, was brought in to clean up the mess. And for his work, and we know Herman Cain had his own sexual issues in his presidential campaign, but Herman Cain was given $30 million to Godfather Pizza, which he owns, to clean up Lawrence King's mess. This is a systemic problem with leadership in this country. And like I said, no one's paying attention. If you talk about this, people think that you're wearing a tinfoil hat. Yet the evidence is overwhelming. When I see pictures of a rash on a kid's four-year-old anus and the CPS of Virginia is doing nothing about it, what does that tell you? Who are they really working for? Well, there's obviously a connection between NAMBLA and the CPS de facto. Would you agree with that, Dave? There is no question. The late Nancy Schaefer, state senator from Georgia, who died under extremely suspicious circumstances, (laughs) said... Well, what a, she died of a gunshot wound, and her husband, who supposedly killed her in this murder-suicide, shot himself in the back. back of the he head. must have had really long arms. I should have had him on my basketball team. Nancy Schaefer said CPS loses kids, a certain percentage of kids, and they go into child sex trafficking. And in some communities, kids are just snatched off the street. Well, and it's you know what the cover, you know what the cover for this was back in the 80s? Do you guys remember this? Here is the cover. <laughs> the joke used to be, oh, the kid's on a milk carton, missing kid. That was the cover. These were many of the kids that were sex trafficked. There was one gal that came out, that a researcher who's now gone into hiding because she's afraid for her life, so I won't mention her name, but she mentioned the woman's name. She came out. I heard an audio tape interview. She was telling her story about how she was trafficked into the White House, but they drugged her up, and when she escaped, she tried to tell her story. And You're a drug addict. No one will take you seriously. You were hooked on heroin and cocaine, and this is how they cover their tracks. Mind-numbing. It is. It is to peer into the reach of these shadowy forces associated oh, with man. CPS agencies across the country. And as Dave alluded to, Doug, I mean, Think of the untimely death of Nancy Schaefer. She was exposing the international component parts of these alleged nefarious practices, and we know her untimely death was uh, quite interesting. So isn't that fascinating? Yeah, I find it interesting that the uh, at the epicenter of this, Larry King, not the uh, talk show guy, but the uh, uh, saving his own loan individual, is in prison, but not for child abuse, under a plea bargain that was arranged and finalized with federal prosecutors back in 1991. King was sentenced to, uh, to 15 years for embezzlement and conspiracy making false financial uh, record entries. Nothing about child uh, uh, trafficking at all. And, and you're right, uh, Dave, people look look at you like you've got two heads when you talk about this kind of stuff reaching into the White House, into the uh, federal, state, uh, local, county, legislatures, uh, the department's agencies and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, this is going on today. And, and Dave, you hit on, and, and Sheila, last night in your interview with Dave, I mean, you pulled this out so well. Dave has been hitting on certain issues that are so, it's it's a minefield, and, and, and no, it's no wonder people are attempting to shut you up, Dave, and we need to stand behind you. And- you know, there's been a widespread series of crimes, including devil worship, cannibalism, uh, medical experimentations, and, you know, widespread drug trafficking. So, I mean, the CIA arms dealing with links with the first Bush administration, as Dave alluded to, Pappy Bush, And yet, here's a really interesting link that I want to get you to get into, Dave. Um, There's also, Pappy Bush was also in bed with none other than good old chairman of Goldman Sachs. Well, he was a banker before that, and then director general of the World Trade Organization and BP. Get where I'm going with this? In fact, you wrote an article calling him the, (laughs) tell people about that. Pappy Bush, when, when you investigate sex trafficking, all roads end with Pappy Bush. I I can't spend an afternoon investigating this without coming up with his name. He's named too many times. Now, what he's really good at is he's two degrees of separation away from uh, uh, revelation and discovery, 
but you know when all the roads lead to your house okay you know the kids are ending up there too and and his uh white house exploits with the uh the page the white house page scandal um those are notorious he was involved in this the man is an absolute animal he's a pervert this is what we're seeing it's almost like you're part of the club you're in a secret society and one of the duties you have as a member of the secret society is to facilitate or participate in or both the sex trafficking of children it's it's almost like a rite of passage some of the people um i suppose if i want to get sued into the stone age i'd start naming names here but some of the people move up with the in the globalist hierarchy by transporting kids it's kind of like the chauffeur for the mafia and then they they earn their stripes there and then they move up to a higher level well i i found the same thing in child sex trafficking but to a t i can tell you unequivocally that uh satanic rituals are involved in this and in fact i'm going to step out on the ledge here because what the heck someone's targeted me already the jean benet ramsey case comes into this this is really interesting to me now originally i'm from denver and denver is not too far from boulder where this murder took place and for those who are young people in the audience jean benet ramsey was a 6-year-old girl that won all these little kids beauty contests her parents dressed her up inappropriately to make her look like she was a teenager uh total exploitation of this child she lost her youth well she was murdered in the basement of her home eventually they found semen on the body she'd been sexually assaulted and then strangled her mother patty had written a fake um ransom note and patty didn't go to jail uh the father john ramsey he didn't go to jail and his company allied signal uh which was a subsidiary of lockheed martin was interestingly headquartered in Amsterdam which is the heart of child sex trafficking and the neighbors around the Ramses were saying that uh, they re- they routinely saw people in robes chanting weird songs there's your satanism and some people think that this poor little girl was a satanic sacrifice and whether the parents had anything directly to do with the murder of this girl is arguable but here's what's interesting Alex Hunter the DA came under extreme criticism mm-hmm. from some of the local media in Denver and I knew some of the local media like Peter Boyles and they'll tell you they were told to shut the heck up and stop talking about it and this came down from some of the highest sources well there was another guy called Kelvin McNeil in the case he's very interesting to me Kelvin McNeil was the uh, PR guy for Boulder County and he was critical of Alex Hunter saying how could you not indict the parents in minimum of co-conspirators and there were allegations of you know satanic ritualistic abuse and so forth well Kelvin McNeil got fired from his position and he went to work for a well-known agenda 21 advocate and he was promptly sent on his first mission to Amsterdam where he was struck by a car and killed in a hit and run accident that was never solved by the authorities and who had affiliations with John Ramsey it's the same politicians today that are running Colorado they're called the gang of four now you people who are listening in on Doug show tonight Doug and Joe show you know who the gang of four are you know exactly who they are you know they're the ones that got passed you can't trap rainwater <laughs> you can't till more than 50% of your farmland they're huge into agenda 21 and these were friends of the ramses well and dave do you find it interesting that it turns out the ramses father was a board member of british petroleum you know there was connections at the trilateral commission well who else do we know former chairman of goldman sachs <laughs> Oh, also, Peter Sutherland, yeah. Peter Sutherland, Director General yeah. of the World Trade Organization. He's evil incarnate, isn't he, Dave? Well, you know, Peter Sutherland, um and not to belabor and go too far astray from what we're talking about, but there were five major money movements on the day that the uh BP oil rig owned by Transocean blew up, and they all moved money and froze stock options for preferred insiders, you know, within 2 weeks to the same day of the explosion, and BP and Goldman Sachs were heavily involved, and Peter Sutherland used to be the CEO of BP in shortly before the explosion, they created a position for him at Goldman Sachs called non-executive C- 
CEO. Now, what's interesting about that is I'm finding links now between TEPCO, uh, mm-hmm. Goldman Sachs, and Peter Sutherland. So it seems like whenever there is a huge disaster, Peter Sutherland's name keeps showing up. And the 98 winner of the David Rockefeller Leadership Award. Hmm, no connection there. No, there is a connection. <laughs> Think about what Rockefeller wants, depopulation. Wink, the gold, wink, nudge, nudge. That's how corrupt these animals are. Should we be surprised that so many of the elite are involved in child sex trafficking? And if I'm sorry, if I sound like I'm really angry, I am. I am one pissed off individual that this is happening to our kids, and no one's speaking up for our kids. Tens of thousands of our children are being stolen every year under false pretenses by these animals to live a life of unimaginable horror, and we're not doing a damn thing about it. So should we be surprised that our kids are being trafficked? You know, it's just uh, we had no child left behind in education. Now in Congress we should call it no child left with a behind because that's what's happening to thousands of our kids. And this is unacceptable. Yeah, it's and these people can kill me, but I hope I inspire enough of my media colleagues to take this forward because n- any culture that will not defend the elderly, the uh, firm, and the young does not deserve to survive. This country does not deserve to survive if we don't stand up for our kids. Yeah, That's well, true. I mean, Dave, so you're, I mean, really I think the culmination of what we're dealing with here is, let's just say this, your child isn't safe from the global elite. I mean, you've made connections with Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth, and Pappy Bush. And, I mean, even in light of your revelations, Dave, in both Virginia and Illinois, these CPS workers, how many have come forward, just contacted you in total, Dave, in the last couple of weeks? I've had, uh, since I ran the first article on Monica in um, the third week of May, I've heard from nine CPS agents. Uh, If I'm correct, I think four of them are out of Virginia. Two of them are actively talking to me now. They're all, they all have apprehension because they all say the same thing. The police, the prosecutors, the defense attorneys are all in bed, literally, and figurative t- t- together, and they said it's one big happy club, and one hand washes the other. There's no advocate for the mother, and, and it's very rare that the, these parents get their kids back. They have to know someone prominent to get help. And this is what I hear from the CPS agents, and that uh, when the CPS agent goes into a home, their goal is to make money for the agency. They have an informal, unspoken quota system, and they're supposed to raise so much money, so they're looking to extract your kid from your home. And what, what I said was going to happen under Obamacare with regard to this issue is now happening, and I said this last August. You did. I said that we will see people politically targeted. Monica Wesolowski is such a person. We're also seeing the fact that the CPS agents now are motivated by greed, you know, professional greed, and they're motivated by money. And so this is leading to the high number of child extractions happening here all across our country. And the stories are the same. I've got stories uh, from Texas and from Colorado and from California, and, and people have come out of the woodwork to contact me on this. And they're all told the same thing by their CPS agents, that if you speak about this publicly, you'll never see your kid again. This is a universal complaint that I'm hearing. And I'm telling people, if you don't speak up in unison, you'll never see your kid again.